Oh guys, what is up? It's Teach here coming at you again with another video over on Ark Survival Ascended. And I wanted to show you in this video how to tame the Phasalosuchus, this terrifying creature behind me. They're actually really easy to tame. And as long as you have a saddle for them, the Phasalos are pretty cool. Um, they are a Scorched Earth exclusive, just so you can see what they look like. There you go, right? They're, they're pretty good in size. And uh, they're pretty easy to spot in the wild because yeah, they look really goofy. But I'm going to go ahead and show you a tame because the taming action is really unique. Essentially, what you're going to need is some C4 and then whatever taming food you want to feed them, right? It's up to you uh, what you want to feed them, but I'm going to recommend some kibble if you can because they are not fun to tame. So anyways, how you're going to have to tame these things is you have to find one in its mound form out in the desert. Now, you can technically find one not in mound form. I mean, but you have to wait till it goes into its mound form. You cannot tame them until they've entered the mound form. Now, the one thing that sucks about that is obviously you can see I'm watching two right now. They tend to aggro on just about everything. So you literally have to wait for them to get nice and bored and then go down into their little mound form. Now, just to show you what that looks like, I'm going to wait for one of these two. I kind of described you the process. So essentially how this works is you wait for one of these guys to go into the ground. Once they've gone into the ground, they'll enter a mound stance, just like it is doing right now. You see it happening. There it is. It's kind of doing it right now. And I'm going to go ahead and head over there. I'm going to recommend you wear ghillie. I am technically wearing ghillie right now. That's a sandworm. We're going to go ahead and kill this thing because I'm not playing this game right now. Thank you, buddy. Um, but anyway, it's not playing with the death worm. You can see that mound. That mound is what we're looking for. I recommend using ghillie. I am wearing ghillie. I just have skins on and some bug repellent. Because then what you're going to do is you're going to get out some C4. And you got to get pretty close to it. And once you get close to this feller, you can see this is the Phasalosuchus right here. You've got to essentially ride the Phasalosuchus. This should be close enough. It's going to get stunned. Quickly ride over and hit E on its back. Now what you're looking for is rocks have to hit rocks when you're driving this thing. If you don't hit rocks when you're driving it, you're going to have a problem. So the rocks have to be breakable rocks as well. You can see that I've got a control bar and a torpidity bar at the bottom. Every time I hit that control bar, he is going to essentially, uh, there we go. Okay, good. He's going to kind of do like a mini circle. Now, the more rocks I hit, the better off I am. And if I get stuck in a corner, he's going to get really frustrated. Now, you can see that the torpidity bar is going up. That's our goal, because the more that torpidity bar goes up, the better we are to knock them out. They are technically knockout tames. Um, obviously, we have to slowly ride this thing until it hits every rock it feels like in the entire game. I've only done it twice so far, and it is a pain in the butt. So you can see the torpidity slowly goes up. They do a half circle every single time, so just be aware of that. You want to try and of keep them in an area where there's no major walls because if there are major walls nearby they're gonna freak out and when they freak out that's when we cause bigger problems so you can see we're at what like five percent right now we're just gonna keep steering him so he does that little half circle thing so just be aware of that um because if you go near like a large cliff face he's gonna essentially cause big problems and yeah you're not gonna like that it is a very long tame and uh, it can cause a lot of problems for you uh, because obviously every single thing he hits, he does a half turn. And if you're in that half turn, you can't really control the steering like you see that right there. And then it's going to freak out, kick you off as soon as it gets caught on something like that. And it's going to try and attack you. Now, in order to prevent this from happening, um, you have to essentially avoid all these large walls. Now, you can keep the torpidity. You just have to de-aggro him. Now, notice how I'm still within range technically, so we're going to go ahead and leave aggro range. And usually as soon as you leave aggro range, it will de-aggro. Negative thing, it gets aggroed on everything. So if you've steered it towards something that it can attack, good luck, because it's going to spend the next six and a half years attacking things. So that's my recommendation to avoid anything down there that it can attack. And essentially what we're trying to do is get this Phasalosuchus to knock itself out on rocks. Once it knocks itself out on rocks, that's when we're going to be able to have a big bonus because the Phasalosuchus obviously is now trying to eat. And uh, once it knocks out, we can actually tame it because you can't actually knock it out with arrows or anything. 
um, you have to essentially run its head into things. So it's a pain in the butt process. Uh, you can see that I only got 320 of the 3000. So I would need to do 10 times the things that I got right there, but it's just a repeat and delete until you can actually make it happen. Now you can technically increase the rates of passive tames, but I don't know if it's going to work super well for you. I have found that you can find so many of these that if you don't get it in one go, um, or you find like a 150, just think about it. Uh, there we go. Okay. So there's another mound just to show you the exact process again, right? We're going to get nice and close. We're going to toss the C4. That should be close enough in range. He's going to freak out. You jump on the back of it and then you just run it into the trees. Now it's just a repeat and delete. What I'm going to really recommend, see how I'm heading straight towards this big cliff face? That's just a trap. I'm going to end up not succeeding this because of a cliff face like that, because he's going to steer into it and there's not much I can do about it. So just keep getting his torpidity up um, by using rocks. Obviously, you can see me doing it right there, right? Um, we're going to avoid the cliff face. Try and position yourself appropriately, because no matter what you do, every time he's taken a half turn. To try and avoid that right because it's not great so you can technically hit your own inventory while you're doing this um but you're just you're just swimming you're just swimming in the ground until you can run out of steam so he's gonna keep doing half turns i've got this one to what five percent and you're it's it's a very long process there is no speed taming multiplier for increasing torpidity um you can probably i guess if you really wanted to you could increase torpidity taken by creatures and that might help but um I haven't found a way to make that work successfully yet. So you do have a little bit of a time gap. So if you can find an area that has more rocks, it's a very strong thing that you can do. Um, and he seems to always take a clockwise circle. So you can use that to your advantage. I haven't really found a super great area yet uh, to tame these things other than avoid cliff faces. That's the only thing that I can tell you for sure. Avoid every single cliff face. We're just going to keep going in circles because he's just like, yeah, I'm going to hit everything that I can. Now, I think it's every single time he hits something that he's going to increase that torpidity. Um, I haven't noticed a major difference in size of rock or anything like that. Uh, he just seems to always uh, smack a rock and then increase the torpidity. So as long as you don't hit a cliff face or an immovable object, this thing will continue to increase that torpidity, though. And I think the more you can run into things, the better off you are. But it doesn't seem to me that rocks uh, or anything other than rocks actually increase that torpidity on the creature. So hitting trees and stuff doesn't seem to increase it for me. I could be wrong, but, uh, you know, I'm not totally sure. So keep that in mind. And then we're just going to keep doing this process. I'm not going to make you watch this entire thing because that would be awful. But, uh, yeah, I'll keep doing it until you can until it's tamed so you can actually see the process because all we're waiting for is him to knock himself out and once he knocks himself out then we're good to go all right guys well he knocked us off because we hit a drop as it turns out so now we're going to go back into the taming phase and it works the exact same way you can see that we got him up to 2k torpidity we're just going to go nice and slow make sure you pop both of your stews and you're going to get close you're going to toss a c4 and we're going to go ahead and sprint forwards and we're going to hope that we can actually get him to wow my mouse stopped working for a second there um but yep now we're just going to continue to drive him into rocks now we are over halfway we're well like 60 percent it's just a process so I, everything that counts is like walls drops anything that he can't technically go through will kick you off but it's great to be able to show that you can actually just, you know, once you do get off, just just chill. Um, he will eventually kind of chill out and then you can go ahead and get back on and continue to ram this thing's head into rocks. So that's all you got to do. I'm going to keep going. I will uh, get to the end and I'll kind of fast forward the rest of this. so You don't have to watch all the pain that I'm about to suffer. <laughs> and, uh, we'll go from there. Guys, we hit one more rock, but barring any circum like crazy circumstances, this should be the final time for it. We're just, I mean, we are so close. I'm going to try and, um, there we go. Got him out of the ground. And here we go. So barring any crazy things happening, this should be the last time I have to take this poor feller and his head through every rock that I can see. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and talk the rest of the way because it's kind of, I, I have lots of lessons that you should pay attention to when I'm doing this. 
Uh, things that you need to avoid are drops. Uh, he, it doesn't seem like he aggros any creatures, so you can be kind of happy in that regard that he doesn't freak out when there's certain creatures. Creatures don't seem to notice you because you're like kind of under the mesh in, in a certain way. Um, so he doesn't really get targeted by anything, but it does uh, certainly help to have a large flat field with no cliffs nearby because the cliffs are what cause problems. It's not the anything else. It's it, the drop, obviously avoid getting drops. It's random. And if you happen to get a drop spawn while you're taming one of these things, rip, sorry. But it, just keep an eye on him, kill everything nearby, or just go away, leave render range, and then come back and you should be able to find it again and just have someone spot for you uh, because they will eventually go back into the ground it is it is part of their code to go back into the ground so it is not something that is very difficult now one thing i'll warn you of and i've made this mistake twice now when you get the torpidity all the way up don't go near things that want to kill you because it's going to pop you off and you're going to have big problems because if you're going near things that want to kill you you're going to need to have stuff nearby to actually defend yourself um, so see how down there's got two deodons I'm going to try and avoid that as the final spot. Not totally the most important thing in the world, but if it's possible, I would certainly prefer to avoid that. Um, and you can see that I've aggroed into a cliff right now, and that, oh uh, my goodness, he's at 3.2 of 3.2. I was so close. Oh well. Um, you can see what I, I'll show you what I'm doing, what, I, what I'm telling you by go out of aggro range, right? So he is still red. Basically, once you leave, as soon as he disappears off my screen, he kind of just goes into a stasis. Now, that stasis is what we're waiting for to end. I'm going to go ahead and kind of speed it up so I don't have to sit here and make you watch, but you'll see they kind of just like walk in circles, walk in circles, walk in circles. They'll start to bury themselves, and as soon as they kind of get nussled in down there, uh, you can see that he's kind of gone to that little circle mode like when he, we had him last time. I'm going to go ahead and take out some of the things nearby so I don't have to actually worry about these so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um... But then, you're just going to run back up to him. We have our little stews on still. We're going to get close. Drop a C4 on him. See how close he was? I can't even believe that this game said you're hosed to that. All right. So, anyways, we're going to pull him away from that cliff face because that really screwed us right there. I think that this should be a safer area. At least I'm hoping. If he jumps off one of these things, I'll be really... I'm really frustrated, but it is what it is. So you lose control every time on those half circles, and there it is. So see how he knocked unconscious? Now that he's unconscious, we can actually feed him, um, and you can go ahead and put some kibble in his inventory, and he will eat that, and then as soon as he is tamed, you're good to go. But that, my friends, is how you go ahead and knock one of these big fellers out. It's very difficult, and uh, yeah, hopefully this video helps you out. And other than that, teach.